Okay, talking about the prodigal son, talking about the father and his two sons. In fact, that when Jesus starts the, the parable there, he says a certain man had two sons. And so we have the father and there, this, this story, this parable is communicating something of the father's heart, okay? So it's not just a story and it's not just a little quick teaching lesson. It is trying to reach us on another level other than our earth life and our Christianity and, and to bring us into the Father in a greater way that we might know him and in knowing him be able to relate to him on the basis that he wants to be related to. Okay, so he gets into it pretty quick. A certain man who, that man had two sons. Okay, so we got the prodigal and we got the elder son. All right, so a certain man had two sons, which means he's a father. All right, so what you have and what most people see is the problem with the prodigal. Okay, now I'm not going to get into it right now, but if you'll check out the story, uh, especially the beginning of chapter uh, 15, verse 1 and 2, um, you'll see that, the pro that, that Jesus is telling this story not because of the problem with the prodigal, but with the elder son. Okay? Just so you know that. Check it out. Don't listen to me. Search the scriptures. You know, don't believe what I say. See if it's in the word of God, okay? So, so he's got these two sons, and the, uh, it, it looks like the father's problem is with the prodigal, if you don't really notice the first part and why he's telling this story. So the, prob the, the problem looks like the prodigal has gone out. He's taken the father's inheritance. He's gone out. He's using it for his own ends, um, and he gets out there and he gets in trouble. All right, so he, he wants to come back and he wants to, uh, you know, he wants to uh, repent. That's the way we see that. And then the father receives him back, and I'm telling this the way most people see the story, and then the elder son shows up and goes, well, why are you having a big party and stuff like that? And starts complaining about this, this, this one getting more blessing and more of the father's attention than him when he's been super good. All right, so what you have here is the prodigal is a mess because he doesn't know the father's heart. He hasn't been functioning truly on the father's heart. He's been, as a son, as a son, you might could even say he's functioning more as a Christian until he left home, okay? He's just in the house. He's doing what he's asked. He's trying to be good, but at a certain juncture, he goes out on his own, all right? So he's got all these problems, all this stuff that's off, but you look also in Luke 15, and you see the elder son and the, the prodigal went out and did and did a bunch of stuff that we would call sin, which it's fine, did a bunch of stuff that we would call sin, but the elder son showed attitudes and things that are contrary to what the father wanted in his son. Okay? So, you know, which is worse? Well, Jesus is telling this parable in verse 1 and 2 of Luke 15. He's talking about this elder son because the Pharisees were saying the same kind of thing. And they had the same kind of attitude. And so, you go, okay, well, here, here's us, black and white. Which one's right? Which one's wrong? Okay. Well, guess what? All these sons are wrong, and the only one that is right is Jesus. 
And he's also the only son that God wants truly relating to the Father through us. And that's why I said, um, because this is uh, Galatians 4, because you're sons, meaning you're in the family because you are sons, you are in the family, God wants to send forth the spirit of his son. The spirit of his son. The spirit of his son. Not just like a little Jesus in our heart somewhere. Well, I got Jesus, you know. Really? Elder son, (laughs) I don't see him. Well, he's in there. Yeah, the only thing that matters is he's in there. Well, you could almost say, and this, this wouldn't be true sound doctrine, but you could almost say that they are saved, but they're not born again. Now you can't get saved without being born again. But we make a difference with, within that. We make a, a, a line, and that line is, at least I'm saved without any evidence of the new birth, which is Christ being formed and born in us. We say, I'm born again. Well, no, Christ is actually formed in or born in us. All right. So we receive, we receive Christ at salvation, but salvation as we see it tends to be, I'm not going to go to hell. I'm not going to be punished. I'm not going to da-da-da-da. And new birth tends to be some inward thing that gives us comfort or something like that. To the Father... The new birth is the Son, His Son within us. But He wants, the Father wants that Son revealed in us. He wants to send forth the Spirit of His Son. We go, well, I got the Holy Spirit. It didn't say the Holy Spirit, it said the Spirit of His Son. Well, need I explain to you the spirit of Jesus, the crucified? Or should I just chew on this for a minute? You tell me. Yeah. No, I'm not going to explain. You chew on it while I chew on it. Hold up. That was good. All right. So, just thinking along those lines now, We got the Father, and in this one, I'm just going to draw sons, and then the Son is Christ, okay? Instead of labeling it the elder son and the prodigal son, they're sons. It means they're, they're in the family, but maybe they don't have the spirit of his son. But maybe they also have a lot of things that make them feel that everything's good. Okay? Because the father's still the father. See, he doesn't... In that story, he didn't cease to be the father toward the prodigal or the elder son. Can I get amen on that? So that can all be read that I must be good or, or what he wants. See? All right, so let's go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. And verse 4. Though I might have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath reasons for which he might trust in the flesh, I'm more. All right, what he's about to start listing is, would, is, equal to, this, this was him as a, as a Jew, but it's equal to this. First of all, what we did read is he's talking about confidence in the flesh. And I hope our confidence is in the very life of the son and that the father's getting his son, not the things that he's going to list in the flesh, which for us could be I read my Bible, 
I, you know, I mean, you know, all, all the things he lists here are big deals to being of God. I read my Bible more than most of you. I'm, I'm quoting this guy. <laughs> um, I pray, or I read Torah, I pray, I go to temple. See, it doesn't matter. You know, I go to church, I pray, I read New Testament. Um, and he lists off religious things that he says gives him confidence in the flesh, but he is about to renounce all the things that we think make us, you know, acceptable, religious, spiritual, all the things that we count as gain. Okay? So, sons, with all of our um, um, orbit around us of uh, Bible reading, prayer, going to church, doing this, I help out, da 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 da, I give, I, all of those things that orbit our life, that we've formed what we call an environment. But it's an environment, or can be just an environment, of Christianity instead of Christ. And you know, I, sometimes I have people go, "Well, all you ever talk about is Jesus." You know, I'm going, is, you know, I, someone said that to me. And I said, "Is that really a bad thing? <laughs> said, Should I not really be lifting Jesus above everything else?" All right, so. So he says, verse 7, but what things were gained to me, talking about these religious things, those I count lost for Christ. All right, my God, is that so hard? You know, I know that we feel real proud of ourselves because, I mean, my life was before I met Jesus, you know, I'm proud of myself. I, I <coughs> left off doing drugs. I left off smoking. I left off drinking. I left off, left off selling drugs, I left off all of, the, all of that, and now I go to church, and I do this, and I do that, and I do that, and it's a complete difference. I'm so different. You're not supposed to be different. You're supposed to have Christ formed in you. That's the goal. That's the heart. <laughs> and if you just make it a goal, you're missing it. I said, that's the goal, that's the heart. But if you're making it just a goal, you're missing it. It has to be the heart. It has to be, it has to be. It has to be that, you know, um, you know, I remember picking up the Bible once <clears throat> and going, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to read the Bible. And I said in my mind, I don't want to read the Bible. I mean, I don't. All right, now I just, you know. And, and I looked down, and it, it was in 1 Timothy, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And the scripture said, give attention to reading. It was talking about the Bible. <laughs> and I thought, um, my reason for not wanting to read the Bible is... I, did, I just figured I wasn't going to get anything out of it. <laughs> you know, maybe because I, maybe I wasn't in a good mood or something. You ever happened to you where you're just like, what's the point? You know, God's not going to talk to me. I'm a wretch. He said, just read the Bible. Basically, that's the way I got it from God. Just read the thing, okay? I'll do the rest. It may not be this moment. I'll plant seeds in you. It's not in vain. You don't feel anything. It's not a big deal going on right now. It's not an explosion and everything. Just read the thing and I'll, and Jesus said this, my words are spirit and life. Okay, so we're his ground and we read it, you know. And, you know, this church was founded on search the scriptures. Do I get an amen on that? 
Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. <laughs> but how many of you have really given? Remember, there was this time where about soaking. I don't know. I'm just I'm enjoying this. That's all. We're not just soaking for the fun of it. We're going after the sun. You don't do that for a little while and then go, well, that was fun. <laughs> you go, I want more of you, Lord. I have to have you. There's no need singing songs. Hi, what is it? How's that song go? I, I desperate. I'm desperate for you. You know, and then we go home and ah. move in the church service, Lord. And that way, I'll it'll make up for all of my lack of seeking you outside of the church service. No, 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 no. He's after our heart. Amen. It's after our heart. If he didn't get our heart, everything else is in vain. All right? Elder son stuff. I remember I, I said, I don't remember if it was the last class or this one, but I said, Jesus said, I, I do always those things that please the Father. The elder son said, I have never broken your commandments. I've always done what you ask. Anybody see a difference between Jesus and us? I mean, we want credit for seeking him. We should, you know, we should just seek him because we love him, because we want him, because we, we don't want to be a church on the corner. We want to be a living reality. We want to be his hands. We want to be his feet. We want to be his mouth. We, we want to be his body. We want, we want it to be real so real that it's not about us at all. Doesn't mean you can't work on a job or do this or that. It means that who you are is not who you are. You okay with that? Christ is your life. You okay with that? Well, what, what was that phrase I used? Um, Something about our terminology. Yeah. We, we, we're seeking, not we, but me. We're seeking to put life in our terminology. Oh, we had the right terminology. It's about the cross. It's about Jesus. It's about da 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 And so we go, Lord, put life in my terminology. We'd never use those words, of course. But our mentality might be, you know, I know the terminology and put life in it. Just forget the terminology. Just act like you didn't learn anything and say, Jesus, I want you, I want you, I want you. Amen. Oh, I'm fulfilling, you know, the cross. You know. <laughs> really, you know. Try that standing before God. Well, it's true. It's true. Well, God's not looking for perfection. And this is another problem that people have. He's looking for Christ. Well, if he gets formed in you, there'll be a lot more perfection than there is at this moment. Right? But he's not looking for perfection. He wants an increase of his son. And you're showing me I got one minute left. I'm, uh, don't worry, I'm going to give you his son, and I'll quit. In closing, brothers and sisters, wouldn't it just be exciting if we just all got after Jesus? Wow. We could run some more people off. <laughs> then the herd no I mean G 
just how wonderful would it be if we were all on the same page. It's called the Bible. I don't mean the same exact page, just the same page, the Bible. And that was our heart, and that's where we want. That's where we want to go. That's, where, that's the direction we're steering. That's where we're going to steer. And, and we're not going to be deterred by, you know, because, you know, as you, anytime you make a decision to really, really go for the Lord, everything in the world is going to hit you. Yes. Yes. Like Patty knows that literally. <laughs> but the Lord allows that. You say, well, the Lord ought to keep the devil off my back when I'm going for him. Well, you know, God the Father didn't keep the devil off of Jesus' back or people being critical or any of that kind of stuff. God the Father wants to know where your heart is. And he wants to know how serious you are. Because we say, my heart is there, but I'm not serious. You know, <laughs> now, I'm kind of serious. Only when someone talks serious. <laughs> you know. but there has to be, I was, uh, I, I should have quit, but I'm not going. To. Oh, yeah. There was, a, there was some show on TV, and it was showing the sun, you know, and it was burning and just, and just, you know, it, you know how the sun operates. It's just a, a, a living dynamo, as it were. It just has, it's, it's, completely self-contained and has all the power and energy in itself. And I thought, you know, that's what Jesus is. And we are totally not that. We need pumping up. And we need something exciting to happen. I need something exciting. Okay, I, I, here's something exciting. I want to give it to you. It's called the Bible. And the Holy Spirit will breathe on this thing and he'll begin to reveal the sun and then you won't be a planet circulating around the sun. You will have the sun formed in you and there'll be little planets that'll come around you <laughs> to get the sun and get the, the sun, Jesus we're talking about. <laughs> you did get that, didn't you? <laughs> Boy. All right. So, so, you know, in your heart, if nothing else out of this, this class you get tonight, in your heart, just tell the Father, I can't do it, I, but I want the Son. And if, it, if you need to bring about something, you know, in the externals to get me moving in that direction, do it. But be careful, because, yeah, and it may not be what you think. Um, set your heart on him, and don't worry about the rest. Seriously. But our minds go, I want you. I can't do it, oh, da, da, this and that, and I always slip back. And da, da, da. Just, just do me a favor and shut up, okay? <laughs> just don't let your mind control your heart. Don't let your fears control all the power of God. Amen. Come on. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's right. Ridiculous. Amen. Just as best you can, wipe it away. Try to get a focus. Your eye is single. And just say, Lord, I do love you. Oh, shut up. I want you. All those things. I, I'm not going to listen to you. I only want the Lord. That's all I got working in me. Just tell him that. Mm -hmm. I want your heart. I want your mind. I want your being. I want you so that it's no longer I, but Christ that lives within me. And then just see what happens. Amen. Father, thank you for your heart, for your son, and thank you for, like in the prodigal son story, showing us in, as it were, in your face, your heart for your son. And so we look to you um, apart from our failures or our lack or our problems. We just truly want 
to, to have a focus, be your son. And in being your son, you will be satisfied. You, the purpose for which you created all things will bring a feast to your heart and merriment with those who are of that same heart. So we thank you. We love you. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you may want to continue to pray a little bit or whatever, or be dismissed, whatever is fine. Just be led of the Lord.